civilization floundering for over 10,000 years. O oh, Bavaria, how I remember thee. Second receptacle of the fallen soul. Daughter of the mountain, I see evil in your eyes, the darkness of your sex, the threat of death against the dying sun. My plane from Salzburg descends into the dark and mysterious side of Tyrolean Alps. I have never known you or anyone else in Tyrol, but just as I feared, you are at the airport gate waiting patiently. I cannot escape this fate, for your gargantuan body hides the city of Innsbruck. In your hand, you hold the yellow flowers you picked from the mountainside for me. Are you just a mountain girl? Will you hug me to your breast? Is your smile clear? Or is it the edge of a knife from which blood will drip on an old Habsburg grave in Tyrol? <laughs> oh, the feminist wears her BA in psychology like a pendant. And since they met, her poor tortured boyfriend has undergone a sea change. <laughs> she claims his sensitivity is only an antenna that picks up entertainment, whereas hers is of an earth mother. <laughs> She says she hears even the flutter of a bird in pain. And thus she cackles on. And he now prefers Spain in male company and is half impotent. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and as Earth Mother, she dabbled in Alexander Technique, or Tai Chi, and zone therapy. She then moved on, as they all do, to Buddhism, <laughs> but found meditation too male-dominated. <laughs> the Vaidya speaks in vernacular. His forehead has lines of ash, more healing than ones the factories prepare. 
But even those work better than antibiotics doled out by the GPs. He sees little. Only the survival of his old mother, a young wife and a little boy. The international botanists are in town for their annual bash. Tricky Dixie from <laughs> Oxford, flouncing his pitta-coloured hair and upwardly mobile accents holds the chair. He funds Pharmaco through earnings from pilfered Ayurvedic secret tracks. He sells to the stock markets in London as part of his R&D. The Vaidya lives in a, a humble two-room tenement. Dixie has 15 acres around his Georgian home and drives a Bentley to his annual party for botanists, city folk and PR girls. But his accent is still oikish as his soul. Mm. He pretends to meditate like a Buddhist monk. Om mani padmeum. His mantra reads, Om mani and fame, my pad may come. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, the English middle classes. <laughs> Pity the genre of an Englishman who does not have a vernacular of his own. No. <laughs> it's not the working class. Or the hunting shooting boys. They have their own dialects. Mm. But the types who say, pink champagne. Uh, pardon? <laughs> Wink. Uh, they use their faces to talk instead. Or double talk. Uh, roll their eyes, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Dinner dance? Poses trying hard to social climb. And they put on airs to the poor foreigners and the humble working class, and they keep upgrading, moving on. Their raison d'etre. <laughs> Never to be embarrassed. And the Indian socialites. 300 socialites waiting to be interviewed. 300 million human beings waiting for a meal. This uh, contemporary couple, once boasted of imported cars and hi fives, attended balls and clubs where they dance to music they did not quite understand. <laughs> and now they subtly drop the name of Yves Saint Laurent. Mention friends on the continent and talk pidgin French. Oh, passé. Con coucher avec moi. Their only claim to fame is the photograph with a young leader, the husband's advertising budget. Scotch. And the wife's Exposed navel does the rest, buying fame in pages. 300 socialites waiting to be interviewed. 300 million human beings waiting for a meal. <laughs> <laughs>